folks, welcome back to this part two of three of this kind of triple header V8 supercar diecast review. And the second car in this package I uh, got today from Linpin Holdings. I will literally just keep banging on about that company because I think they're brilliant and everyone should buy V8 supercars from them. Um, shameless plug in, they don't even have to pay me for this advertising. How, how friendly am I? How good are they? Anyway, the second car to arrive in the package this morning is, I'll be honest, one of my favourite V8 supercar liveries, paint schemes, cars ever. Literally, this is the car that I grew up supporting when I got into V8 supercars around 2003, 2004, when I really started to follow it a lot more on Motors TV. When I caught the odd race, this was the car I always pulled for every single time, and I was gutted when the sponsorship went away and the car kind of broke up and the driver left. Here is the car. Let's zoom in. It is the 2005 Russell Ingle Stone Brothers Racing Ford Falcon. I think it's a Ford BA Falcon, I believe is the model name, because it's the one before the FG. It might be the BF, I'm not sure. I'll Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But this is basically the car. This is from 2005, which was the year Ingle won the championship for the first time ever. He was a bit of a... He was almost like a Mark Martin or, well, yeah, Mark Martin would be a good one. He was a very hard driver. He's, he's got the nickname The Enforcer, um, which I think is very appropriate. He's a very, very aggressive driver. And he'd always come just short in terms of the championship. But in 2005, he finally cracked it. He got it. And I can't, couldn't think of anyone more deserving to win the title at the time. He was, it was a really good performance. And, of course, I was delighted because this was my car. This was my guy. I, I literally supported... <laughs> Literally, when I didn't know any better about the series, I saw this car on the telly in this kind of livery from a couple of years earlier and thought, wow, I love the look of that car. How's that car going to do? And I kind of pulled for the car and I was like, oh, who drives it? Oh, Russell Ingle. Oh, I'll go for him. And then I saw Russell Ingle's very aggressive driving style and that just made me enjoy it even more. So this is probably the car that helped me get into V8 supercars. So to have it as a diecast is just awesome it really is it's kind of a shame Ingalls kind of his career's kind of winding down of late he's gone to a couple of lower teams I think he's at super cheap auto racing at the moment it's kind of a, a mid-table team he's still a very aggressive driver whenever he gets in a battle he you know you, you'll still see like drivers come up and be like what the hell Ingle? what are you doing you nearly had me off and Ingle will be like well that's just kind of how I race mate <laughs> you know so he's one of those drivers he's just naturally aggressive it's just it's in his blood to be like that but obviously it was, he was even more aggressive when he had a car this good that was winning him a title. And what's interesting to note, this is a classic car collectibles model. All of them are in this box. But this is from a few years earlier to the one, the first one I reviewed, the Jamie Wynn Cup Holden. And it's straight away, I pick it up and it's heavier. It's made of heavier materials straight away. It feels like a heavier die cast. Um, and you can kind of contrast on how the designs have come along. Let's put... Bring in Jamie Wink, uh, James, not Jamie Wink, up James Courtney's FG Falcon for a kind of comparison, and you can see straight away the earlier Falcon definitely has a more prominent splitter. I mean, look at that. That's kind of like the splitter on the, uh, the the car of tomorrow NASCARs. Very prominent splitter. Uh, the spoiler's kind of the same, pretty much. It's also kind of flatter to me. It's like more like a flat kind of saloon rather than slightly fastbacky like the the current gen Holdens and Falcons. So. I mean, ugh, there's not really much more I need to say about the paint scheme. I think it's brilliant. It once again proves my rule that oil and petrol companies look amazing as sponsors on race cars. They always do. Without fail, they always do. Every single time. Shell, Castrol, Pennzoil, uh, Pertec, Caltex, Havilin, any uh, Mobile One, uh, Shell, Golf. They all do. They always look brilliant on a race car. They just suit it. Well, a petrol company would suit being on a, a race car, but you know what I mean. So it's a fantastic livery, um, even though it's slightly early. You can kind of see that it's slightly early because there's just slightly less detail on the bottom. You can kind of see there's, it's more slightly moulded, but it's still really good detail for what you're getting. It is fantastic, and it's a it's a superb model. Detail in there, you can see it just about in the lights. Less kind of painted details in the interior, so just a little bit less overall for a slightly older model. But the fact that this is my favourite car of V8 supercar history. It's the car that helped me get into V8 supercars full stop. To have it as a model and ha sorry, I just knocked the stand. To have it as a model and have it this detailed and this is an exquisite model all the same. I'm just I'm blown off. 
I think it's fantastic. I love it to death. So I'm going to stop raving now and I'll move on to my the final part of this triple header diecast review very soon. But for now, this has been a diecast review of the 2005 Russell Engel Caltex Havelin Stone Brothers Racing Ford Falcon, with which he won the title. So I'll see you soon. <laughs>